Michael podcast. Bring a friend God. or use rubber. My God. <laughs> I didn't go on there. No, it didn't. <laughs> That's not the worst thing that has been said on the podcast. No, it is not the worst we had, thing. We had a comic said. come in named Corbin Lamaster that uh, it was like the first year that we, we had him. And he was like pretty excited and stuff because we had like good numbers. And he walks in, and as soon as I hit record, I'm like, "We're live." He's like, "Richard, stop saying the n word." <laughs> and I immediately just like I felt my soul leave, and I was like, "I can't edit that." He didn't say anything, and that got like thousands of views. Like it was funny. Mm-hmm. Like it's not it's not the worst thing that has been said here. I think people have crapped on Disney more yeah, than anything. That's true. And he says the n word only in private. So. No, I. Heather Noggle. <laughs> we have a guest both. today. <laughs> what, what did you fuck into? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, well, it's a Friday and um, I'm not sure. I appreciate you doing this because it's always nice to, to have like the people that I've met through one million cups and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I find, first of all, we'll, we'll get right into it. I find what you do <laughs> really, really interesting, especially the fact that you use the the whole thing translating, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, technology. And I think that's really, we've had this conversation where I think that's very intelligent because when people say translating in technology, oh, okay, this person gets it. How did you come, how did you come up with that part? Because that's on your LinkedIn. It's like the number one thing on your LinkedIn. Well, I've been working with that crossroads of people in tech for forever. Usually in software where I would sit down with regular humans and I would be the technical person and I had to make myself relatable. So I couldn't use my jargon. You need to get this closer. No, no, let me fix right. that right there for you. Just, yeah, the, the center right there. Okay. So you can't use jargon with regular people because they tune out. Yeah. And you really mm-hmm. need everything that's in their brains to do a good job on building the system. And so it was always a here's what I'm doing. Here's what we're looking to do. Confirm it, use real English and come back and then translate that into tech for people who had to actually write the software if it wasn't me. Okay. And so I started there and then there's so much going on nowadays. Now that we're all online, our lives are all online. And you've yeah. seen that unfold well, really over the past 30, 32 years where it's just gradually, we, we started in, mm-hmm. I sent my first email in 1991 and so wow. I'm an old, old school technician and now everything's online and we haven't really felt how much we've needed to be doing with cybersecurity. And so I really, in the last two years, started transitioning out of software and into cybersecurity and taking all the technical information that is transmitted to other technical people and trying to bring that into everyday conversation with regular people. So how do you feel about the Commodore 64? I love the Commodore 64. Without the Commodore 64, I would not be sitting here today. Okay. It's good. It's, it's in- a reference that Richard don't get if you look. Eric, yeah. yeah. Eric Eric has a lot of fun when we have like physicists or when we have uh like, I call them uh, uh, gear nerds because I'll literally sit there and like Eric used to be in the Navy and he did like aviation stuff. So like he gets that. And then I just sit here and look pretty and go. Yep. Normally you he has edibles. The clips too. Yeah. You see it in yeah, the clips. I'll, he I'll has say, edibles. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely. <laughs> so work in my office, I have a copy of 64. It's not hooked up, but you know, it's one of those relics from childhood that, that taught me how to pass high school geography. What is, junior. what's a Commodore? A, a so it was Commodore? this computer, home computer you could buy. I got mine at the end of 1982 for Christmas and it would hook to your television. And it's how I learned the word. Yeah, there you go. Oh, <laughs> yep. cyan. Oh. You hook to your TV, and if you turn it off, you'd lose everything. There's no memory to it. Oh wow! Yeah, you had, to, you had to you had to print it, and sometimes it came with a monitor. Sometimes you, but you could use your TV. Oh, oh TV. okay, yeah. okay, okay. Wow. And the TV came in the one we had in school. It came in two different colors the green and then you can turn it to like an amber or a gold color for the lettering so yeah okay fix your mic you went there to we a go. fancy school we, we didn't have no it wasn't fancy school. we had one hallway <laughs> you totally went to a fancy school if you had a commodore six how how many how no, many sure people were in your graduating class for high school <laughs> well here i by then i moved here so kick a i mean 460 how many did you have eric for graduating high school in your in your group 36 yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. You got me beat. I had ninety eight. 
<laughs> and there was only 17 dudes. There okay. wasn't a lot because I went to a business high school like this. This I've never mm-hmm. told you. I've, I've I've talked about this on the podcast. Like, I went is to that a private school? school? It, You know, man, it kind of sort of is. And I've never really explained it to you. And we've talked so much. It's basically where you go and like you leave with something like I left as a trained interpreter. And then I left with a data entry clerk certification, which I never really understood how important that was until like I'm a grown up now. And I go, why don't you just organize that into a system? I learned this in 2005. Well, that's like me with typing. I was like, I'm never going to use this. Oh, no. Typing. I, I learned typing pretty young. My dad. My dad yeah, no, we had it in high school. We had a class for typewriting. Yeah, for yeah but type- you had the. <laughs> no, your Commodore 64 had a program. You can learn there. Oh, yeah, really? They did. Yeah. Dang and uh, yeah, I just thought it was like, I am not going to grow up be a secretary. I'm not going to type. I'm not going to need a typewriter. And it's, then. It's crazy how people are losing. Like, like, like when I write cursive or I write, well, shorthand writing is very rare. But when I write cursive, some people look at it as like, what the fuck is that scribble? And like, you don't know what? Like, how? Like, yeah, I got accused of being a doctor. I was like, no, no, that's, that's cursive. I no, am not doctors, a doctor. Yeah, doctors <laughs> use the shorthand thing. Yeah, so, and you can't understand anything they write now. So when it comes to, to cybersecurity, give me like the most basic 101. Because because mm-hmm. I'm coming from a background of I've worked wiretaps. And I've worked a lot of things that, like we have this right here. Uh, the house has a, a a VPN that's protected by password. It has a it has also a software antivirus, mm-hmm. and then it has a rolling IP address because I just don't want someone if this ever goes bigger, someone to like start playing and finding. And I have someone who comes and checks it, but I don't mm-hmm. understand. Let me put it to you this way: I don't understand why cybersecurity is so huge now, and why it's so dependent i understand the privacy i completely apologize for that that was me that's one right there i understand that people really don't secure their information like i don't give out my phone number Mm -hmm. i don't i don't like giving out my phone number and it's it's out publicly and i hate that i don't like giving my address because you have my address and my phone number you have two things to build a blueprint of who i am you know these are little things that i see but what in general is it that that you see in your world nowadays? Sure. You can look at it from two different directions. One is the human side of it and the things we want to keep private. And the other is information about your customers or other, like your financials. You want to keep that private Mm -hmm. in your computer system. So you have to secure both the humans and the data that's in the computers. Okay. And so securing the humans, I'll give you an example. Just this week, MGM, the casino, got hacked. I saw that and they shut down the, yeah. their systems. They yeah. shut down their systems. But what's not immediately apparent unless you're looking in the more technical areas is how they got hacked. What and, do you mean? Well, essentially, you expect that somebody just breaks into the computer. But what actually happened here is that this hacking group did something called OSINT, which is short for Open Source Intelligence. And all the things you were just saying is how they got in. They looked on LinkedIn and they picked out an employee. And then they went and they doxxed or researched this employee and made a document on him or her. And then they called up tech support for MGM. And they're like, I'm so-and-so, this person. And I, my huge. password. Yeah, that's, we call that in the, in the, in the yes. intelligence world yes. or in the, in the drug world, that's called human. Yep. It's a and human intelligence OSINT. gathering. You call OS, what, say that again. Open source intelligence, anything you can find out there in the wild. So it's the same thing. That's interesting because it sounds like uh, identif- uh, identity, but that's theft. not identity theft because there's no laws. Like no, it's if you like, call in and you're saying you're somebody that you're not, that's impersonating. Yeah, that's impersonating. That that's true. But how much money do you have to fight that? Like this is, and, this is well, they got in the whole system and shut down a casino. So I mean, let me go down. <laughs> go ahead, let me hear. This human doing the human thing after all this research, and evidently it took ten minutes on the phone with the tech support person to get the password reset, and then with the valid credentials, which probably well they may or may not have had full access to the system. Then the team goes to work, the criminal team. And they can take that, whatever that level of access is, and escalate it to where they could take over the whole systems. And that's what's happened. So explain to me how they would take over the whole. Well, okay, let me rephrase that question. Explain to me how they would, why, why they would take over that whole system. Probably besides ching, money. Ching, 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 ching. Yeah, okay. So it's always, yeah, it's a money thing. Uh, okay. In this case, it's money. They're not looking for secrets of how they run their casino. 
They want to shut them down and get money. And so the impact of this, say you're planning to go to Vegas, you want to gamble, you want to have a good time, and you're going to stay at MGM, you, the human, you come in and now, you know, if you were there already, yeah, yeah. And, and there's no free Wi-Fi yeah. that really, yeah, there's no the free Wi-Fi, but your machines are down. There are all these pictures of, you know, the, the gaming machines, the slot machines, et cetera, anything that's yeah. video. And it's just like blue screen to death is what we call it. There's nothing there, you know, sorry. So, so how did, how did they get they hacked into the system. How did they get money? Did they hold ransom. MGM ransom? Yeah. As they got there, they exfiltrated the data. They're thinking six terabytes worth of data, and then they six locked terabytes. them out. Yeah, isn't that insane? Holy <laughs> shit. Of of what? Of, of yes. information? Customer information. Okay, Customer yes. information. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just... What can they... It's valuable to MGM. So, okay. So, here's the thing. From, from our side, I understand what you can do with that information in the black market. Mm -hmm. Right. I understand that you can go on the black. I can go right now on a secured VPN with a with a Pegasus link and I can go in and and check things. My question is, is, is that really that common? Like, is it more common than I, than I'm aware of? Or... Targets like that. It is somewhat common because there's money involved. And these are typically groups of people who have organized it's organized crime. Yeah. Organized crime has moved online. Well, didn't they do that with a. I think it was last year they hacked a petroleum company mm -hmm. and shut them down yes. and held them ransom. It's like, hey, you're get... probably thinking the Colonial Pipeline. Uh, yeah, exactly. Can you explain that one? I don't know a whole lot about that one because I didn't true. dig too deep into it, but it sounds like you do. So take it away. <laughs> <laughs> if not, I can pull well, it up. They, yeah, pull it up. I just, I know the the basics because I didn't say in the news cycle very long because they said, yeah. uh, you know, the current administration was saying they're for the, the little guy and they mm -hmm. want to shut down, you know, they're not into fossil fuels and everything else. Okay. And then a foreign agent, they didn't say who they suspect they know mm -hmm. who it is. Yeah. Colonial and shut pipeline. down the gas, the pipeline. When oh, shut get, down. Yeah. Okay. Something like this, an attack on critical infrastructure, it will usually be state sponsored. So North Korea, Russia, really? China. Yeah. yeah, see, that's that was the the names mm -hmm. they were floating around, Live. but they didn't know. They're just trying to figure out how to get well, into the grid and get further, or how, try to test the systems. To America, if our adversaries in cyber war with us take down our critical systems, I mean, it's it's in some ways. Can an you active define player. critical systems for people that don't know? Looking at electric. So, do you remember in two thousand three, and it wasn't terrorist related, that some fluke happened? I don't remember what it was in New York and Detroit went down off the grid and new york was off the grid for days oh so okay okay so yeah. you're talking yeah, but that was it what happened that's um, the accident okay. though they, they did it accidentally yeah. they did. and they shut I, the whole personally whole city down. what would happen is first of all people within 24 hours would panic yes everybody would panic because you would have no pos systems active and you don't know how long it's going to be and if you've never been in a hurricane where you have no power and no access to that you don't know what to do the next thing that it would be, it would be, I mean, the biggest thing would be communicating with people. And that would be the biggest problem. And I don't think we really have a system set for us to do that. I think if that went on for long enough, it would it would become very barbaric. You well, they did see, have a system in in Maui where they had the sirens they didn't use. So that was cool. That that <laughs> Jesus, I, Jesus, you're killing but me. you get where i'm going yeah that i see how bad it is. structure is anything that we all use and take for granted essentially so you disrupt supply chain or something like that suddenly there's not food in the grocery store we've experienced the mild version of that with yeah. covid but yeah because yeah. yeah, can you imagine when people can't microwave their hot pockets they were going nuts oh my god they will go nuts. I'm just saying. They're just <laughs> all the teenagers would just start. Yeah, all the college, outside. all the college people who think they know everything, be like, "All right, it's oh, anarchy." But that's not. But but see, you're thinking small. Like no, within, I'm not thinking within, small. Within, There's within big colleges hour, out there. No, Jesus Christ! Within an hour <laughs> of you shutting down that, think about all the hospitals that we have here. How many people you think are going to die? Like at like least that? half. Yeah. At least half. Well, you hit in the middle of winter someplace so you hit in the middle of the summer you have either the heat or the cold extremes so that's yep. going to add panic to it so those are always targets and you see it now hospital school systems so there are firms that specialize in defending operational technology not information technology and so that's critical infrastructure now, did so. you did you look at the uh dennis quaid narrated a 
I forget the name of the movie, but it was about losing the, the electrical infrastructure. No, I, I mean, there were three different hubs. He was he, in the, in the thing he was talking about. If you took out those, one of those three hubs, you mm -hmm. could create, uh, anarchy just in, in yeah, but that, you, that you particular part that of the in, United States. In, in anti-terrorism, like at least I learned that when I went to anti-terrorism school, the best way, the best well, I way learned it from the, that, uh, um, uh, you're killing me. The Die Hard you're, movies. You're killing me. Actually, the very up. last Die Hard movie. Shut did up. you see that you're one? Kill yeah. Me. So hold on. So what I what I learned. <laughs> Is that the one with the fire sale thing? Oh yeah, God, the fire sale. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. See, see. Don't encourage me. I saw Die Hard in high school. I sneaked in when I was fourteen. <laughs> I saw that in the movie. Theater. I mean, I mean, Bruce Willis stopped it. I mean, Bruce Willis oh, still God. around. So I mean, so we what might I'm have a chance. We need Bruce Willis. As, no. So so what I know is. Uh, if you want to like completely cripple a country, right? The first thing you attack is the water sources, of course. right? Not critical infrastructure. That's critical mm -hmm. infrastructure because uh, that's what you control. So like, it's basically like, like if you would plan a war invasion, right? I need to control the capital because in the capitals where all the headquarters is for everything normally, right? Okay. And would then you... after that, you shut down the water because the water will lead everybody to start going crazy. And then after that, you attack the grid, because if you can attack the grid and you can control that, then you can start ensuing mass chaos and information doesn't spread. If I'm invading you from the East Coast and you don't know what's happening and you're in Missouri, you're kind of fucked because the information isn't coming. So well, that's see, what that's, I think. That's, is, that's kind of what we in the Navy, we did a little bit differently because we I'm not saying we have any type of things that could knock out communication just by flying over it. However, if you can't communicate it creates yeah it just creates, just not yeah. communicating creates chaos and you can't organize so so right here what we have for the colonial pipeline is it was a victim of a ransomware attack in may 2021 yeah infected some of the pipelines digital systems shutting oh for several days yeah the shutdown affected customers and airlines along the hack was deemed a national security threat as the pipeline moves oil from refineries to industry markets the, the state of emergency okay yeah. as far as i know they paid them to so get it. did they get it back so so 100 they, gigabytes of data is holy what they, shit a hundred gigabytes of data in a two-hour window that's not really that much but it's enough it's to, enough to shut to them, them down yeah. that's the terabyte, huge. terabyte is, that's six terabytes that's that's insane I understand how they can like get that much information and not have someone like because you know your phone's tapped like everybody's phone is tapped this is mm -hmm. this is very easy to do mm -hmm. most people just don't want to admit it but I don't understand how they can move that amount of information. Like we'll go back to MGM. How can they move that amount of information and store it without causing, calling any attention? That's what my dumb brain doesn't understand. So how, yeah, you wouldn't believe a trail. That? Oh, and then there's a trail. It's just, who's looking at the trail, the logs, et cetera. And so there's something in, in cybersecurity, a term called dwell time. Mm -hmm. And on a lot of these attacks, somebody will get in and just kind of hang out. Get the lay of the land, stay on the server, figure out how best to get the data out, gently get the data out, and then go, oh, by the way, I have your data, and then encrypt it. So that's some of the ransomware attacks are that way, so they where could... you have the double extortion, where I've got you encrypted, mm -hmm. and I've also got your data. So oh, they could do that over days, and you don't know it? Yeah, well, yeah. Some of these attacks, they're, they're months. Oh, months. Months of dwell time. And with them, oh. you know, they're so they're in there and you don't even know it. So, exactly. so this is basically a different avenue of collecting intelligence, but via the cyber world, basically. So so my question to you is this, and this is a question I had for you, was how does the whole thing with uh, with crypto, because this is something that I've been reading on for a while, where the thing with crypto is it has a, a unique ID, right? Which that I understand. I, I mm -hmm. understand how that works. You encrypt it, you put it in, you can only access it if I give you access. I get that. How can that, how does that play a role in keeping things safer? Because I see not crypto itself, but the the uh, blockchain, the blockchain. I see blockchain as a form of being able to control information and disseminate things. How how does that play into effect to be able to, to effectively safeguard your, your shit basically? Yeah, I'm not a cryptocurrency okay. investor. I do understand the concept of the blockchain, mm -hmm. but you look at two different ways. Cryptocurrency is based on cryptography. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the uh, unique idea, I think you're probably talking about a wallet ID. 
Correct. Yeah, we're in an area where I I have no expertise, but most of these payments, just to bring it back into what I do know. So the ransomware happens and they're like, we want $1 million. Of course, it's much more than that. But they pay in crypto because they have a way to keep themselves. The criminals have a way to keep themselves anonymous. So they're not wanting a check or a money order for for Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin is cryptocurrency. Yeah, but can't they trade? Yeah, but the Bitcoin could be traced, though. So not, they, really, yes. not really if you have it so so the way that it works is if you have a unique wallet mm-hmm. right so basically um i don't have my wallet on me basically let's say that i have my wallet right mm-hmm. this is my wallet and and you correct me if i'm wrong this is my wallet right mm-hmm. in my wallet i have cash how can you access my wallet you got to fight me for it right if yeah. you try to take my money you got to fight me for it yeah in the crypto world i don't have to i can literally take it and put it in another account you have no access to it and the only way that you can like i know people who have have Mm -hmm. uh hard drives that they have a ton of crypto that they mined but they don't remember their their password their their face on it's gone yeah at that point i've heard of it i've heard about that at that point i know someone who who had over 300 um i don't want to say his name because this this hurt that person they had over like 300 uh bitcoins Mm. and when it went up to like 50 i i've never seen a grown man cry so hard bro he couldn't. He just couldn't hack it because he didn't. He didn't do the due diligence. That sounds like the one guy. He did this. He actually did the Bitcoin commercial when it first came out, mm-hmm. and I forget when that was. It ninety something. Anyway, instead of paying him, they gave him Bitcoin, and he forgot about it oh. until like when it hit fifty, like a few years ago when it hit fifty. Yeah. And, he, yeah. and they go, "Do you know your password?" And he goes, "Like that was twenty five years ago." I See, don't. That's know. why. Right. That's why I have. I still. This is one of the things why I like, and this comes from comedy and from interpreting. This is why I like having a pen and paper. Mm-hmm. Exactly why. Oh, I don't want you to remember that. Just burn it. You'll never find it now. Mm-hmm. Like that's the one thing why pen and paper is like one of my favorite things. But yeah, because once you destroy it, it's, it's over. Yeah. So that's how they get away. That's why the government always says like, this is a way that people, and it is, it absolutely is. But mm-hmm. here's the thing is if, if you look back in time, like if you've ever been, have you ever been on a dark web server? Probably. No, 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 no. You would remember because it's extremely terrifying to be on it. So you know what I'm talking about. A lot of times, like I know back in the day, like I had a three letter agency that I did a case with and I was an mm-hmm. interpreter and the dude was like, all right, close the door, leave your phone there, sign the affidavit. They, they read you in and then you sit down and when you walk in, it's terrifying because it's like free range. You just type in whatever combination of numbers and it'll take you somewhere. Maybe not somewhere you want to go, but I saw like ads for like, people selling weed and it was like i will deliver to your house and da 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 leave the money here like this is basically from my understanding this is basically just intelligence work but done electronically yes it's that's insane to is me. that is that what the maybe i'm wrong but there's the guy he was called i guess he had the website on the dark web called the silk road the silk oh road was dark web was yeah, yeah, yeah i remember that i remember the silk road incident yeah, that but was, he that w- was, but that was, but he wasn't even selling cocaine. He was actually selling prescription <laughs> drugs for a lot less than you got them from the. Yeah, you know, and that's and and that's the problem. And, and the Go government's ahead, like, no, 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 you can't undercut us. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there's this fascinating podcast called Darknet Diaries. Oh, Dark, Darknet Diaries. Darknet Diaries. One word. Darknet. Where is it? Where is it? Is it on YouTube? Yeah, you can find it anywhere. It's really popular, but he'll go through the stories, the investigative research, talk to people, and it will really take you into the underbelly of a whole bunch of really nasty things and some comedic things as well. So, yeah, there you go. It's not. So there. That's Oh, this guy? Yeah, that guy. Jack? Jack Reesire. Oh. Great stuff. He he produces one a month now. It used to be more frequent, but you can... You can delve into some pretty deep stuff happening. Here. Holy okay. shit! Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's why he doesn't show his face. I get it. Yeah. Well, it's like the whole thing with uh. Have you ever heard of a? Uh, no, it makes sense. He's doing the dark web and he's covered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever heard the story of the cicada three three zero six? I think. Maybe, but not immediate recall. Tell so, me. So hold on, we'll yeah. pull this up because this is something. This is like. Uh, Hold on. 3301. When your guest doesn't know as much as you do. Oh, no, no, no. This is just because I went. No, this we, is, we have Google. This is, so. I, yeah. I, I went, <laughs> one night, me and my wife, like, we didn't have kids. We didn't have work the next day. And we did a little too many wow. edibles. 
And we sat down and we literally went down the roll of down the hole, down the rabbit hole of Cicada 3301. It's yeah, basically, yeah, it's, 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 it's insane. The level of, of, um, of like how deep they go into it to where there's like Masonic, Masonic symbols. <laughs> there's like cryptography into cryptography. Like you have to, there was one thing that they had that you had to have like a, a cryptograph reader and they were like giving you numbers and it was a mathematical equation. And then you would move it and then you could read the message. But then the message was in Masonic uh, writings, which I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's basically like letters, right? Okay. And then you had to decrypt that to decrypt it. So you have multiple levels. Multiple levels so of like it. And then world. you had to go to, to different locations in the world where they would put a poster. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, no, this is geocaching. <laughs> it's what's geocaching? know that no what is it no love this with your daughter it's you can follow things and then go out and it, almost like pokemon go is predecessor for that you can go to places and and see things you just need the coordinates gps coordinates that just sounds yeah you have to look up geocaching, geocaching. i know it has nothing to do with what we're doing yeah Damn, that does sound like pokemon yeah it's a predecessor of it because so I don't know if you, I don't, they, I they, yeah. they probably changed it, but I don't know if you, they had the rare Pokemons in the dark and dark alleys for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> and people I, would wait I there those are, for other people to show up. <laughs> I'm just saying, they would have some fun with that. That's interesting. I oh, mean, you go, oh, like a scavenger hunt. Yeah, look at that, fourteen twenty three around Springfield. Yeah, that's a that's a better word for it. But okay, is there like, money in them? Like, what is this? There's usually just like something to see. I never did this, but yeah. What did you saw today, honey? Goes to her mom. I saw a finger. Like, <laughs> was it a human finger? Yeah, it was. It was fake. It was fake. It's always fake. It's always fake. It's a fake alien. It's a it's a Mexican alien. It's fake. <laughs> so yeah, you need to go. You need to watch. Yeah. You need to watch this. Okay. Because be, and I'm gonna tell you right now. Have a glass of wine, have some alcohol or something, and and get ready because it's what there's like a three hour documentary on it on YouTube where you literally type in Cicada three three zero one documentary, and there's one that's like three hours, and it literally interviews people that like oh yeah we did this and then we got stuck here and then they send you a file but then you have to decrypt the file and it's a picture and when you look in the picture you zoom in it's got numbers and you had to look at it with different shadings like it's wild to me that's why i think like stuff like that it just sounds like a three-letter agency hiring people like i mean <laughs> you know it, it's it yeah just... they show up at your door it's like you solved the puzzle <laughs> 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 you work for don't us now it. Don't yeah you work for us now don't like encourage. i don't want to work for you Do like... so <laughs> so why why is it that this has become obviously let me rephrase that i know why how is it that people can can do what can people do in the most basic of forms that they can be a little bit safer? All right. Yes. This is where I come in. So I put together a series of really short videos. You can find that on heathernoggle.com if you want to pull that up. Yeah, let's pull it up. And these are really, what I found is, you know, people like us who are entrepreneurs or people who up to maybe have a nonprofit or up to six, seven, 10 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People like us don't do a whole lot with cybersecurity. We might just have a couple computers and just some email, but we might have a website out there too. And so we have people's data we're protecting. Some of us in the entrepreneurial world maybe have medical data. And so there's some compliance things we have to do really here on these videos. So on that, where do, where do I start? If you click on that, it's got my YouTube channel, but it's got them organized in a course. And it goes through things like you may like your pen and paper, but I'm a big fan of a password manager. And we, on a password manager, it'll create your passwords for you and you never have to know them, but you need one super crazy, super secure password to call the passphrase. Mine's like 45 characters long. And that's how I log into that thing. It's a ball. So you, you have yeah. to type in the 45 characters. Yeah. And then anything else, it'll just automatically apply my password to the site. And does it be unique then? Does it eliminate if you if you fuck up like more than once? Does it does it like erase it or something? Well, you've got a little bit of leeway, I think, on login. And then you also have your backup system to get in there, so it's not like the Bitcoin wallet, like we were talking. The about. The reason I asked that is because I know I know someone who's a who's a special agent with a three letter agency that they were telling me a story that years ago they they got a phone from someone that 
uh, he was doing not so very nice things. And when they grabbed the phone, he went to turn it on and the phone went blank and then it went white and then it reset it completely. And I was like, <laughs> so, so that's, that's something that not everybody does that then, right? That's a level of the, the nuke. Yeah. That's something else. The like, nuke is that what that's nuke. called? Just yeah, yeah. it's not what it's called. Yeah, it's just the idea of being prepared for getting caught. It sounds like that guy was prepared for being caught. Wow. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. that. It sounds like he took some tips from Hillary, but I don't know. <laughs> We're not going there. No, please don't. <laughs> so, so, so when yeah. we go here, you got your intro. Yeah, it just talks about the the running shoes. One is is about being better than the guy next to you. Because for people like you and me, we're probably not targets. Well, maybe you guys are, but I, I'm not much of a target. So if, if I frustrate some some non-nation state hackers, so like not China, Korea, North Korea, and Russia, but just people who were trying to catch a lot of little fish, mm -hmm. you know, because regular people can get caught up in that, then I'm going to be too frustrating for them to spend time on. That's my goal here. And, and for all of the people in small businesses that if we can just do enough to frustrate people, they'll move on to somebody who's easier, like senior citizens. So it's, it's the same as like no. when people pick, like when criminals pick targets, it's exactly. like- uh, They want a soft target. Yeah. You don't- you So don't, don't, be a, that, don't be a soft yeah. target. Okay. okay. Soft I mean, so- supposed to not be a soft target. So a business comes to you, right? Let's yeah. say a business comes to you. What's some of the first things that you look for that can help you like go, oh, okay, well, I know where to go, right? And, and I'll explain like for me, right? Like when people come to work with me, they're like, hey, Richard, we wanna break into the Hispanic market. Okay, cool, no problem. Do you have Hispanic people in your staff? Do you have any sort of knowledge? Have you ever traveled? Okay, mm -hmm. cool, well, now I know where I can go so I can break everything. What does that look like for you specifically? What do you have that's an asset that it connects to the internet essentially is where you start. So that's gonna be your phones, your ring doorbell. That's going to be your, and that that being in a home, maybe a business, mm -hmm. and that you might not even think of that. That's an Internet of Things device that connects to I the Internet. I didn't think about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so your phone, your iPad, your Apple Watch, if you're an Apple Watch user, your Fitbit, if you're in that way, um, any sort of tablets. What's connecting to the Internet, and is it up to date? That's one vector. So that's the, the computer aspect you were talking about. Antivirus software, we usually call it anti-malware these days because it's a little more advanced. Make sure you've got that on everything. If it connects to the internet, keep it all up to date. Keep it patched. So that's one area. Train your humans to know what to do in the event of somebody trying to scam them. So most fraud these days happens based on something with the computer or the phone digital. Yeah. And so that's going to be an email attack vector. That's going to be on your phone. You might get a text message. I, know, I've hey, seen a lot. One blah. No, hey, UPS packaging. Yes. I'm like, bro, I haven't ordered anything. What are you talking? I don't even open it anymore. Yeah. That's one so, of the things I've learned. So I always get the ones from the Illuminati. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, yeah. Either. He gets he gets at least once a week. He'll get a call. It's because of the cicada thing. Could be. Yeah. Could be. I don't think Eric is is te that technologically savvy. I'm just holding out for the, the but Templar Knights. If like anybody's if, listening, like if, so. <laughs> you know, if if you put Eric in a prehistoric time, he'll kill the dinosaurs. He'll fight. He'll feed you. But it's like, all right, build me a jet. He's like, hmm, hmm. Oh, maybe not that then. But yeah. I do that when I don't have coffee too. I so. do. <laughs> that's the first thing we got to do. <laughs> that's how you see. That's how you see better drive, bro. If they attack like a main coffee place. Yeah, as soon as it, as soon as supply Ooh. chains are disrupted for coffee, it's like okay. Oh yeah. Now I have to sure. kill somebody. Yeah. That's you don't want to see a veteran without coffee, man. No, you do not. You do not. That's that's really interesting though that you say everything that's connected to the internet. So. And here's something that I learned from from someone who was a, a he was a tech for a, a three letter agency was your phone is better off on airplane mode than anything. Why is that though? Yeah, it's just I think by default not going to connect to the internet. But you know a lot of your like your Wi-Fi, I would never recommend using public Wi-Fi. Why? Because public Wi-Fi is not very secure. So another way to, you know, it, it's possible your devices are discoverable is another way of putting that. Possible. To, oh, like yeah. like the your, the the link, know. whatever, the drop thing that, that Apple has now, you can drop a file on someone it's nearby. That, but okay. if I can, you know, you're driving down the road and you're, and you're a passenger in somebody's car, 
and you go to turn on Wi-Fi, you know, you're going to hook to your hotspot or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you see everybody is like networks. Oh, yeah. The names. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, OK. So yeah. Like that. Your, your actual device. This is I'm more of a people cybersecurity person than I am a technical. I just mm -hmm. know you don't don't ever use public Wi-Fi without a VPN. And so for most people, that just means don't use public Wi-Fi. So don't pick up a USB device that isn't yours and plug it in because they can autoplay and hey, malware, you know, even if so, it's not connected to the Internet or because well, it's, it's the autoplay. So just like remember the old CD-ROM drives and yeah. you would put a CD-ROM in there and it would just start it would give you the drive. Yeah, 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 program something on a USB drive and it'll do the same thing. So the, sometimes people, you know, when they're attacking the, the good guys will you can hire them to attack you and see how good your people are and see all the things. That's so an actual job. job. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, the Darknet Diaries guy will tell you all about it. But they'll do, they'll do company branding and they'll put them on the USB drives and just sort of scatter them and see who picks them up and plugs them in. So yeah, that's oh, an attack vector. I know I know people who do like security. Like that was there was a company that years ago that I wanted to do. It was like, hey, you basically try to you're gonna try to break in here. And you're gonna try to mess with their their system. And I was like, dude, I would kill to do that. Like just fuck with people, one hundred percent. Yeah, but they can. That's a dream job. Do yeah. that, but so, they could do that cyberly. I didn't think about it like that. Like in a business because it sounds fun to me too who's who's gonna stop me i'm quintessential almost grandma so yeah that's i i can see yeah i can see that i can see i can see how you would be able to get pretty far away i don't think i'd be able to get pretty far away i think people look at me and they're like nope fuck this get out but that is a good point how people can very easily so <laughs> what, well, how what, do you do get i'm just curious you talk about the vpn can you get yeah. a separate vpn if you have to use the uh a public Wi-Fi. Some places will disallow it, but you know, my advice there is usually you don't have to use public Wi-Fi, you get a hotspot. But if you can't on your phone, of... use your hotspot. Okay. So most phones have and cars have their own hotspot. Okay. Well, your phone does. Your phone service. Like if you use Verizon or you use AT and T, you can get a hotspot on your iPhone or yeah. your Android device. Okay. Yeah, we okay. we've done yeah. that on trips before. Like mm -hmm. when, when we're on a trip and Jalen wants to watch like a movie on her tablet, right? I'll just put a hotspot and she's in the back. Yeah. put it on yeah, yeah, yeah so damn i never thought about the 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 hot spot shit so let's have i didn't think about, about this too yeah, you know, yeah. For it. and you know you can charge your phone at the airport mm -hmm. yeah so there are devices if you if you're somebody who does that without the plug yeah there there are ways like with an atm they can mess with that and so that if you use just the usb plug to charge there might be some, you might pick up some malware that way from the the, the yeah what yeah from the cordless one yeah from the well, not the cordless, but the, the USB cord instead of the actual plug. So you know, like, and you can do that. You too can on... hack a cord. I didn't know you could hack it. Not the cord. Not the cord. No, the thing you plug, the it, thing into. You plug it into. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So there, are, you that's can spend, wow. you can go to that's Amazon why, real quick. That's why a lot of people buy those yeah. separate. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I have one. I never thought about. I never thought about it like that. I was like, so you put that there, and it stops the data jacking. They call it. Oh, so, okay. So yeah. it's kind of like whenever, or just I, use a plug. They use a, uh, they put a cover on it, and if you put like a gas station and you slide your card in there, yeah. Oh yeah, I just seen those. it's a I've card. Seen those. It's a card read. So it's, it's, a, basically it's basically something like that. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've okay. seen those. I've seen those for the ATMs. I actually, oh yeah, the we ATMs. actually caught one on base one time. Like when I was an MP on base, I remember one time someone's like, "Hey, somebody's like fucking with the ATM." And then when we got there, there was nobody there. And I just looked at it. And like the part where you put the card, I remember scammer. it, 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 looked, yeah, scammer, yeah, it scammer. looked like it was loose. So I like went to put it in and it wouldn't go in because it didn't fit. He didn't have the right measurement. And then when I pulled it out, it, I pulled out like a, like a film strip <laughs> with it. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And somebody's like, that's how they get people's credit cards. Mm -hmm. That's wild to me. I, I saw one time on a documentary that you could pick up, uh, POS airways, like the airways of POS systems, when people pat flash your credit card, how 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 dangerous is that? I have no idea. Okay, yeah, okay, I mean, that's that's yeah. I'm more interested in how they hack people. So, so what are isn't it history? easier to hack people? Yeah, it's easier to hack people because we want to trust. We want to be good people. We want to help our neighbors. No, I and <laughs> I'm sorry. I and you have not listened to the show at all, have you? She's not, not listening to it. soul. Like, <laughs> it's like I, <laughs> this is what happens when you see too many bad things and you look at people and you go, how can I take beat the you crap out. out of you, yeah. eliminate you if you're a problem? Mm -hmm. Like that's that's the problem when you see too many bad things. That's why my mind goes to something negative. Right. But 
really so so the problem in essence is just people the problem isn't isn't really the technology the problem in essence is the fucking people so how do you what are some here's a question that i have for you what are some <laughs> basic things like give me three basic things that anyone could do to like a company could do with their people to protect themselves mm. there's a movement called zero trust and it essentially means that I'm trying to put this in the simplest words possible. Used to say trust, but verify. And now we say, forget that nonsense, verify, and then trust. So if I'm sitting in front of you and we know each other, you're going to have a level of trust with me that you wouldn't have if you'd never met me before, mm-hmm. or if you were just hearing my voice on the phone. Mm-hmm. So basically I have, when I present, I like to have a slide. One has my picture and the other one has, you can see it's me, but it has zeros and ones instead of my face. And that's Is that on your LinkedIn. No, it's just on a presentation I've, okay, I've done okay. before several times. And so the zeros and ones is a representation of, we don't really know if that's Heather Noggle. It sounds like her, you know, it's, it's got the qualifications of maybe the ducks. Bro, you're fucking me up. I'm too sober for this. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you you talking are just to, fucking is that, me up right now. Are you talking about like when they did the Joe? Yeah, because Joe Rogan, somebody did a Joe Rogan. Oh, when they were selling that once. Yeah. He did, goes, did I am not. That? Yeah. He they, goes, they li- no, but it literally sounded like yeah. him. And it was they sold like a sh- and there was nothing they could do. That's happening with voice actors now. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's wild. So how do you keep going? I'm sorry. You're <laughs> fucking me up over here, Heather. Concept then of if they can clone your voice, it's digital, it's over the phone, you're not looking at me. You cannot trust that's me. So you remember when we were kids? Well, you will. You will not. <laughs> <laughs> When we were kids with our parents, we'd have the safe word kind of thing. Oh, no, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to go back to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, is that oh, really yeah. Heather? It sounds like her. It's got her inflections. Yep. It's got her voice. Mm-hmm. It's got her mannerisms yep. vocally. But if I'm not right in front of you, I'm not going to trust that's you. And yeah, so well, it's that, that idea. That was a a, a spy thing because they had... Uh, the actually, no, it was actually based on a true story. They had yeah. a phrase and there was yeah. a response to the phrase. Because they the guy actually had a double and they did yeah. yeah it's a in the military like we used to do that like um if you were out running missions right mm-hmm. and uh for example like if you're doing a coordinated attack and I hear footsteps I go like there mm-hmm. was one time that we had uh how how goes how does the valley look and then they would have to say the mm-hmm. word of the week right and it's like oh hey what's up dude like, what's going on what you doing over there oh man you know just but yeah, I, I see what you mean. Like, we're probably going to have to go back to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you look then applying the same concept in systems, you used to do all the security around the perimeter, like MGM appears to have done. You know, it's really hard to get into a casino and hack it, right? Yeah, that's you not... know you, You've seen Ocean's 11, 12, 13, 15, mm-hmm. 17, whatever. <laughs> but I get the idea of yeah. casino has a lot to protect, much like a bank. But it seems like, okay, we've got a really hard exterior, but it's a gushy middle, which means they didn't do what's called defense in depth, which is a, to assume a breach that everywhere you ask, are you who you say you are? Instead of going, oh, you're in, now you get to do blah. So that's the big movement of you don't, you don't trust anything anymore. You don't trust the human unless you know the human and the humans in front of you. You've got to verify every time. And a lot of this can be done electronically so that you're not like logging in every three minutes. It's not the impact on the person, but Mm -hmm. basically the other, another way to look at that is if you are a human, you have the least privilege possible in a system to get your job done. What do you mean by that? So not everybody is super God or super goddess admin. So, you know, on some systems where you are the lead technologist, you can do just about anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give that same access to the data entry person data entry person is going to have a very strategic very limited like security clearances access. okay exactly got like you security. okay now got you. now i'm okay. tracking yeah. now i'm tracking okay. okay so system design that way yeah it's going to make sense military perspective it's the same thing don't give anybody access to anything he or she does not need okay because that's what we because yeah. if you like if you had a top secret clearance mm-hmm. you couldn't go and just see any top secret clearance yeah it's the same thing the first time i went into a wiretap room like i had to like they sat you down with the attorney. Like yeah. you know what a T three is like, t- t- three threes and a T like that. Like <laughs> he's like no 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 no. And then you sat down and you go into that room and it's fucking terrifying the level of technology that we have. Oh yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's one of those things like you said it's it's all human. And you know Heather, this is something really interesting. Like I don't know if you realize this, but this all correlates a lot with with human trafficking. 
yeah, because it's it's, it's 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 all it's all the same. And I hate to say this, but I don't know if you know this, but sixty nine percent of of traffickers recruit over the internet. That is 69%. not surprising. Mm -hmm. What you look at Innocent Lives Foundation. Innocent Lives Foundation. told you about this. So one of the major human hackers, his name is Chris Adnagy. He has a um, hackers working against human trafficking, essentially. So from attacking this, yeah, there it is. From the perspective of we have all these skills, how can we help? And not being vigilantes, but going in and, yeah. So you're talking about like, uh, they used to do that Dateline. The guy would show up to see a 13 year old girl or whatever I'm sure and they do some of that but you know that you see there and that that's the last time i checked this you should that much. you should contact uh i'm gonna save that so we can study that and what was the yeah. other one zero tr okay i got that zero one trust yeah. so trust. have you ever heard of deliver fund i have not or delivery fund okay okay cool i've done i've done cases with these people i think you should contact them because i think you have like a really good a really good thing to to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. I did a case with these people that the woman. This was like the last case that we did. The woman was chained in a in a basement. She was five months pregnant. She was five months pregnant and didn't know it. And these were the people that, with a little bit of information, like a picture, they found a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. And with the law enforcement ended up helping and shit like that. So it's basically all the same thing, but it's it's. So what are some tips that that you can do with your kiddos that would help them keep them safe? Because my problem is like it's like YouTube, right? Like YouTube is a problem to me because even on the kids section, unless someone flags it, your kid could be watching some messed up shit talking about like selling your soul and shit like that. Because I've seen this with other parents. Yeah, that's why we have like our, our my kid like it's like, nah, man, like you don't use that unless you're right next to me. And I hear everything and I see if I ask you what you're watching, I want to see. it. So no Digimon. Watch your mouth. <laughs> this is How dare you be bringing that blasphemy here? So, what are some things that you should do? Okay. Doing it. And, you know, electronically, there are filters you can set. You can lock down however it's going to be your parenting style, how you deal with that. My kids are older. And for us, we didn't, they didn't have phones till high school. And that was the way we dealt with it. And so, if they were on the internet, you know, you can take your, you can take your router, you can limit how many hours you can figure out how much internet access you want to give your kids and yeah oh and, it, and that's the thing too because i have friends who like i don't, I don't want to say his name because he's having an issue with his kid where uh pornography like excessive pornography and under it's 18? yeah under 18 and it's so it's so easy for him to type in pornhub.com and then boom like that or there's ways that he can go like on other sites that he can like get in like is is that a i've talked to some people who they're not hackers, but they're they're basically like counter counterintelligence people, and they're like for the pornography industry is a huge way where people like get you in with shit. Is that is that still a thing? Oh, like, sure you know, it, the criminals always. I'm not all that's going to be criminal, but anyone in a shady industry is going to have a technological advantage, and I imagine that there are a whole lot of malware software types uh, yeah. that you can get by looking for porn sites too yeah so you know you're going out there looking for something you get something yeah. else and that and that's the scary thing to me is like that's why i have like the vpn or everything because like i don't want the computer to get hacked and someone type something in and then yeah. next thing you know i get a knock on my door and it's like well that's not me well it's on your computer they can still track you they Sorry. can still track you oh, like yeah. that that's insane yeah. That's well, I know that fine. ISP, what's that? That service provider. So even though you've got a VPN, your your traffic is still there are ways you you could research that could anonymize your traffic better than just the VPN alone. Oh, I know, I know there's ways because mm -hmm. we do it. I just don't know how we do it. Because I, I have Danny's <laughs> Danny Gonzalez is the one who he comes every six months or like if yeah. something's up, he's like, Hey, we need to update this, you need to update that. Yeah. That way we can because like I, you know, for me personally, when I teach like the human trafficking class. If I type in human trafficking videos, that's yeah, that's probably gonna, you know what I'm saying? So that's why yeah. we're able to do that. But they can still track you through the that's wild. Oh yeah. That is how cyber criminals are often not caught, but that's how they're caught is they are not covering all their tracks and there are a lot of tracks to cover. So that's good news for the good guys, is there are a lot of technical ways to go through and figure out where something originated. 
No, I was see the police doing that all the time. Go yeah, ahead. I was going to ask. They had uh, a friend of mine had a problem with the the kids with the phone, so he got this. I forget what company it was, but they got a device, and it looks like like a salt shaker, or it could look like anything. Anyway, you twist it. No way. Because they oh. were they wouldn't leave the phone alone. One second, Eric. Dinner. <laughs> One second. I would just have internet access. Well, you can do that too, yeah. but I was just, I was just curious. It was take the phone away. Um, take the phone away. Yeah, you could do that. I just thought it was that just kind seems of a, like I don't a unique I don't, thing. Yeah, you know, the Wi-Fi goes off and it's dinner time or whatever. I don't. I don't. Just think, so you can put a setting like something like that, maybe. I don't yeah, know. see, I didn't, that's, that's custom, the thing. I didn't know you customize it because this yeah, was a while can, ago. But it's, it was, it's like uh, it's also yeah. a thing like you know for me like as a parent, right? My kid's little. But like I've seen it with other parents where they go, listen, man, like, don't don't get into the stuff, you know, don't do this, don't do that. But then, you know, other parents aren't doing that. And the kids like, well, I do it. And it's like, bro, like you, you, well, you always going to be difficult. You know what it is? Always going to hear that argument. It's like, I well, understand that Davey, Davey next door does it. Good His for Davey. Parents if, if, <laughs> if Davey goes and jumps <laughs> off a upper ridge into a sea of cocks, like, are you going to jump into it, too? We could we could make that argument all day. Yeah. What I'm yeah. trying to say is that. It's really hard to educate the the younger generation. Mm -hmm. Why? Why the fuck is that? That's what I don't they understand. Know too. That's part of it. Oh, Heather. <laughs> the youngest, I guess you know they're good kids. So yeah, I've met your but kids. They're fucking awesome. Spot check stuff. We're not worried. Well, I learned my youngest has a YouTube channel, and my youngest's YouTube channel never shows his face or his voice. He he has like four times the followers i do it doesn't have his name it's like kid you're doing this all right it's coin collecting so oh he's, he's okay. showing his coins and he has all these followers and it just cracks me up i had no idea and he's like yeah look at my youtube channel that's crazy but oh wow space to he's in high school oh okay. you know okay. he's, he's not a little kid but okay i was gonna yeah but the same thing, that's pretty advanced like, for a kindergartner like, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> damn my kid sucks then. <laughs> Nah. She speaks two languages, but she's not a good YouTuber. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's pretty fun, though. It's, it's like, okay. Were you shocked when it happened? Were you like, you? I was shocked. I was abused bit because, you know, like, <laughs> he, he didn't do anything wrong. And again, we spot check. Like, mm -hmm. And always, you know, this as a parent, you, you make them think you know more than you do. And sometimes you drop a fact of something you do know. And like, yeah. I haven't had to do that. My kid's pretty, she's my kid's, young. yeah, my kid's pretty young and she, like when she messes up, I'm like, dude, it's okay. Like, just tell me the truth. Cause, and I told her just one day, yeah, I told her one day cause she like lied about like something uh, that I saw her, like I saw her on the cameras eating a cookie. <laughs> and I was like, Hey man, did you have a cookie? She's like, Nope. And I looked at her and I smiled and I go, and I, I could smell the cookie. It was a chocolate cookie. And I'm like, I'm like, listen, like, I know you had a cookie cause I saw you on the camera. Don't lie to me. If you had the cookie, that's fine. Just understand that there's a consequence to pay because you broke a rule. That's all it is. Like, just don't lie to me, because if I and find I know out when you have the cookies. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's it's going to be pretty. Oh, you you don't. We're having lasagna and you only ate half of it. The mm -hmm. fuck did you eat? Are you sick? Like, yeah, I, I get that. But it's I feel like this type of information should be more. Like, it should be really pushed in, in schools, man. They should really the be safety pushing piece schools. Of it. The yeah. safety piece of it and, mm -hmm. and and also like the the consequences of it. Because that's the problem is like we, I can tell you how to be safe and how to be safe all day, right? But if you don't understand what the consequences are at a major level, you, you're you never and, – and then there's the other problems like that won't happen to me. Well, mm -hmm. look at our parents too. So my mom used to live in – in, I don't want to call it a facility because it was, it was a senior apartment. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a facility, but it was a facility. Mm -hmm. And they had shared Wi-Fi. So all the residents had the same Wi-Fi, the same Wi-Fi password. And you're looking at people, you know, demographically, these are people with some money. And they are people without the skills that we have in our generation, having grown up with some level of computer. And, yeah. you know, and the next generation has even more skill. But golly the targeting on these places not really locking down how they should i nursing imagine homes, yeah. they're not being targeted well it's not a nursing home it's you know it's a well, little either, no either. what i'm saying is what i'm saying is nursing homes are yeah. i don't know if you know this but like nursing homes are literally where over 40 percent of stds in the united states come from it's it's literally the most oh yes yes yeah. because and you then put your usb in the wrong hole and yeah 
because people. yes, yes, <laughs> because because you have to understand they they just because I I remember I used to I'm not gonna name it but there was there was a nursing home that I went to that. Over three quarters of the people got uh, a venereal disease from one person, and yeah, I think and I read it, about it, that. it got crazy. Please tell crazy. me it was a resident and not a staff member. What's a, oh yeah, it was a resident. Yeah, yeah, I can tell you that much. It wasn't a staff. Yeah, member. I read about that. That would be pretty crazy if it was a staff yeah. member. I would have more questions. But then the other thing that that uh um those places have too is like pill sharing. Like everybody mm -hmm. shares pills, man. They have pill parties and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a thing, dude. This is a thing. I know I know guys who are cops that they're like, bro, we'll get called to a nursing home. And it's like no one wants to take that call because you're going to find one fucking thing that's going to unravel into the other. And then next thing you know, it's like, oh, my God, you, you're 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 lying on Medicaid. Oh, my God, you you're taking these pills that aren't yours. And that's why you're having heart problems. Oh, you're giving him these pills when he doesn't have the money. It's wild to me. I can't imagine if someone was to go. I don't want to say that because I don't want something to happen and just come back. But like, dude, if someone was to hack into one of those, it would be fairly easy. Uh, it wouldn't be a new idea. Just you saying it here. Because yeah. Well, then, but... If you're 85, you probably don't care a lot. Oh, you, well, care, if you, and you, your care, you care if you lose your life savings, homie. You do. I'm just saying, if you're in a nurse, if you're in a nursing home, you're 85 and you're banging all the old. Oh, people. you mean like, like, so, yeah, 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 no, 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 no. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But what I'm saying is like from a cybersecurity perspective, you know, yeah, it's very schools. It's, that's the other one that worries the school's me. School's another one. Yeah. That's the yeah. one that worries me a lot because it's like I know in the school where my kid is like they have cameras. So it's like, how hard would it be for someone to like mess with that system? And they don't have Schools a cyber expert. Schools are underfunded. They do have experts, but they're still understaffed and underfunded. In and what what do you mean by that? So underfunded in making sure everything, the information keeps safe. And if you're right about cameras, that's another obvious thing that we don't want people looking at our kids while yeah. they're in school. Are you saying public schools are subpar? Jesus Christ. I'm <laughs> staff. Yeah, they definitely don't have enough staff. Put me on record for that. No, 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 no. no just no. asking a question. Damn it, don't. Question. Uh, no, I, I agree with you. And that's the well, to, to the human trafficking aspect of it. Some of these scammers are trafficked people. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if a lot of people think that through. Of most people, you want to know what a doctor said to me one time when I told them when I told them what I used to do. They're like. That sounds like a TV show, bud. Go sell that to somebody else. Like, that doesn't happen. Fucking doctor. An, M an MD, a PhD. Mm -hmm. This person said that to me. Because they just can't... Fa I think... And we've had this discussion. I think one of the biggest problems that people have when it comes to cybersecurity, when it, com when it comes to crime in general, I think people really don't know how far someone will go to make a buck. I think that's the biggest problem. Or how far someone will go just because they're bored. Because, I mean, look at the the hackers, um, the I mean, the pipeline stuff, man. Like, you got to think about it. Like, how did that conversation start? Like, let's shut down the pipeline. Can we do that? Jimmy, give me a minute. And that's the thing is, like, that's for me, right? And I think this is, you can relate to this. How do you get that message through? Because it's really difficult for me to get, like, the human trafficking mm -hmm. aspect across when I've seen hundreds of cases and I know how bad it can go. How do you deal with that like wall that people put? Yeah, it isn't easy yet. I don't know that I've had any great success of getting my message out to where everybody is like, oh, I'm going to think about cybersecurity today. Yeah. So right now I'm starting with these videos that are out there. They're free. They're easy. They're quick. That whole spate of videos is under 45 minutes in content. So if I can have any sort of amplification of that content, People share, people share it with other people and then continue to get better. I mean, as you know, podcasting, my videos are kind of rough because they're new. Mm -hmm. but the I'll take a look at them I, and I'll critique you later. Yeah, <laughs> the more, better I'll get. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, if, if I can be that cybersecurity lady, then yay. I think you will. I think you will. I think what what would what would a. Uh... What would like the ideal person coming to you be like? Like, what does that look to like? To do actual you? paid work, yeah, it's probably paid work. a small business. We're looking at realtors, small dental offices, small medical offices. Really, realtors? Yeah, I, realtors, I know the information aspect, but what else? Like, well, the, just knowledge. 
and figuring out what they have to protect. Anybody is a target in terms of having data from some of their customers that they need to protect. Oh, okay. So that's so like the main key. data. Okay. Well, that, and if you know when somebody's house is empty. Mm, yeah. yeah. Dates, dates and calendars. Yeah. 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 So realtors, hospitals. Oh, definitely hospitals. hospitals. And from that aspect, when you get to a bigger company, training is really important. Training of the staff to make sure that their cyber, we call it cyber hygiene, is good. Cyber hygiene. Cyber hygiene, toothbrushing. I like it. Yeah. Now that, I could see because if especially if you got a lot of uh, patients with Medicare, because Medicare has had a lot of problems well, with so, yeah. federal government. Yeah, I get it. Compliance. Yeah. They're big compliance things through HIPAA. VA, VA started recently. And I shit on VA a lot, but they recently started, they like, started really cracking up on yeah. on the data thing because they've had a lot of things. And the main thing that happened was when ISIS got that list mm -hmm. and they were they were targeting people. Mm -hmm. And after that, did you hear about that? No, that's you didn't scary. hear about that. I may My have... friend who's an E7 in the Marine Corps. Yeah. His name popped up on that list. Yeah. It was a list that ISIS put out indicating these are your names. These are your addresses. And they had an old address of his. Mm -hmm. But how hard is it for you to, like yeah. you said, how hard is it for me to call and say, oh, hey, man, I moved. I need to update my address. Or, hey, if I go on, mm -hmm. on Facebook and I just see like it, it's really one of those things that that when that list came out, like a lot, Tim Kennedy, Tim Kennedy was one of them. And it was all because they hacked some sort of data that they, they hacked some place and they they found it. It was a I think it was a server that was for the VA or something. I, like that. I don't recall correctly. And, and I've tried looking into it. I can't find much. But Heather, you you have been super, <laughs> super like informational. And now I'm just like panicky all over. Um, <laughs> we can't leave you there. If, bro, that could. <laughs> you already live here, don't you? <laughs> that is a fair point. That is a fair point. That's why he eats out of us. That's why. <laughs> Bro, that's that's why I tell people like just so so before we let you go, uh, a few things. Number one, where can people find you, and how can people get to work with you? So I have the heathernoggle.com. So can we get any easier on that contact form on there? All the videos, all that's all the free stuff mm -hmm. trying to serve the people. And then I have codastack.com, which is my actual company. And I can do anything where tech meets people there. I have some software work. I'm working on. A web WordPress website with a lady. I've worked on some technical branding with some people. And so C O D I S T A C K without the K actually C O D I S T A C. It's very late in the week. I cannot spell my own company <laughs> name. Yeah, there you go. So that's me. Cybersecurity. Yep. Oh, let me share this here real quick. So there I am. So those okay. are the easiest ways on so how to work stuck. with me. C O D I S T A C dot com. For the people that are listening and not watching. Yeah, and so that's, I'm Heather glad you made H it so easy to spell for your company name. No, that's, that's good. Stack with me in the middle. Yeah. So, yeah. So these are the, the best. Okay. Yeah. And obviously businesses that are looking in the area that are looking to expand and looking to protect their data. Yeah. Everything like that. So no, the I, biggest I, thing I, is just protecting people's information and teaching people to be wary and be that human defense uh we've got people processes technology the people yeah, have yeah. to do their part our processes have to help us and not hurt us and then obviously the people who do hardcore tech work mm -hmm. to keep us safe too no i did i did have one other question for you could do you get run along or come across a lot of people going like well that doesn't happen here because we're in missouri they're like what well, doesn't happen in missouri <laughs> I don't so much. I spoke yesterday at Northside Betterment Association okay. over lunch, and I, I it's always interesting when I speak. There's about 40 people in the room. Mm -hmm. There's somebody over in some corner going, you know, just nodding along with everything I say, and then there are a couple of people who want to provide their anecdotes of, oh, this, that, which is perfect. When people tell their stories, I don't have to tell a story because that's going to validate everything I'm saying. Yeah. So one gentleman okay. had gotten hacked. And so I just let him have the floor. He started talking about it. They caught it pretty early. They didn't get in and get a whole lot of stuff. But the, whoever got him was starting to send text messages and stuff to his contacts. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, because I... I that, I'm really believable. Okay. No, I just... It, I've run across people who are like, well, well, that happens in like Texas or New York or something like that. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. I mean, there's criminals everywhere. And you would not believe just the stuff that happens in missouri and people were like like you said he's like yeah. that's a movie I was like no no that's 
that's last week. That's what that was. <laughs> I appreciate you coming. I think we have a lot of information to to study up on besides the Coda stack, the Heather Noggle, the yeah, Jack Dark, Dark Jack, Jack Resider. Yeah. Jack Resider and all that. And I think next time we have you we'll have a little bit more I'll change educated. all my passwords by then. Yeah. So just so you... Yeah. That's password manager. Yeah. I that's need to get the wild. password manager and, and... Hillary Hoggle, everybody. Like if you if you see her, go ahead and follow her <laughs> YouTube channel. Go ahead yes. and subscribe to the Rico podcast. And uh thank thank you so much. This has been yes. fun. Eye-opening. Very eye-opening.